Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make tofu at home from scratch with your own two hands using just lemon, soya beans and water. Now here are the things that you'll need, 225 mils of lemon juice, three and a half cups of soya beans, a cheesecloth, large pot, blender and water. <laughs> Okay, so the process started early in the morning for me. I woke up, measured out my three and a half cups of soya beans because you need to let it soak, you see, for at least two hours. So if your beans aren't washed, by the way, you'll need to wash them. Mine weren't washed, so I am going to wash them first and then come back. Um, if you buy it kind of sealed in a pack, chances are that it is washed. But like I said, if it's not, then you must wash it. Okay, so... I've finished washing it and I'm just going to fill the bucket, I was going to say, whatever, with water and allow it to uh, to soak. So as that's soaking, I just went and prepared my lemons. You don't have to do it now, you can wait until just before you're about to start the rest of the process. It was hard filming with one hand, but whatever. Um, so yeah, just squeeze your lemons, 225 mils, okay, and then just leave that aside when I come to start the rest of the process. So six hours later, I came back and you can see the beans have kind of swollen up. Um, so now you're, gonna, now you're gonna blend it. Like I said, you don't have to leave it for six hours. It can be anything from two hours onwards. So now I'm just gonna put the beans in the blender a bit at a time and you're gonna put a generous amount of water in there because what you're trying to get is the soya bean milk. Okay, so you can see I'm adding a liberal amount of water, then I proceed to blend. Okay, and you want to blend it for quite a bit because like I said, you're trying to get the milk out of it, so you need it to be as blended as possible. Okay. And then I'm just going to transfer my blended beans into my container. So I'm using this really big one. You can't see the whole thing, but it's really big. It's the biggest one of the, the set. And that's because I'm making quite a lot. You obviously don't have to make this much. So now I'm going to proceed to blend the rest of the beans. And then I'll come back once I'm done. Okay, so that's all done now. So I've rinsed the blender out with water because I'll need that water later. And this is how much I have. Yes, it is a lot. Um, you obviously don't need to make this much. Okay, so now we move to the floor. And because I'm, I'm making this much, I'm using a large pot, obviously. And then you need a cheesecloth because you're going to sift the blended beans into the cheesecloth. And I forgot to film it, but literally all I did was transfer that blended mix into the cheesecloth. And I'm going to now sift it. So when I made it the last time, I made about this quantity and I used this small cheesecloth and it took me like over an hour, I swear. So yeah, I really recommend getting a really big one. This is actually a muslin cloth that I got from a fabric shop because um, that works just the same as well. So yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to use that water that I told you before just to rinse that container there because there was some blended beans that were stuck to the sides um, and yeah so at this stage you're just going to keep adding water and sifting and you'll see how I do it shortly. Okay so you literally so you can do it with two people so I started doing it with my mum so you both hold uh, you both just need to hold two sides and just kind of jiggle it around like this and you'll see that the milk starts transferring into your pot from the cheesecloth and you just keep doing this. Okay, so you just keep adding water and jiggling it around. And the aim is for the milk that's coming out of the cheesecloth to be kind of like an almond milk consistency, okay? Now, you can actually do the sifting process by yourself simply by tying your cheesecloth, the two sides together like that, like I'm doing, and you get kind of like a handbag and then you just jiggle, jiggle, jiggle by yourself. So that's what I ended up doing so that my mum didn't have to help me with it. five minutes later and you can see the amount of product in the cheesecloth has dramatically reduced okay 
when it's all transferring into the large pot. So you've got a load of milk there, which is, it looks so nice. <laughs> okay, so my mum's just going to show you what the consistency is looking like now. So you can see it is very almost there. We're getting to that kind of almond milk consistency, but we're just gonna add a little bit more water to get more of the milk out because it can still be a little bit thinner. Just a little bit, not a lot more. Okay. Okay, so now I have jiggled as much out as I can. I'm just gonna use my hands and squeeze the rest out until I'm all squeezed out. Okay. Okay, now we move to the hob and basically what you want is to get this to a uh, to boiling point. Once it starts boiling, then you're going to add the lemon that you squeezed earlier. Okay, so only once it starts boiling. Now, you see my pot wasn't big enough. So, well, I mean it was, but it could have been bigger. So if it starts to boil over, just do something like this to help kind of put it down. You can also reduce the heat if you want. Um, when I did it in Nigeria with my auntie, we used a huge pot. We did it like the really traditional way outside as well, so you can see the size of the, of the pot here. But if you don't have a pot that big, obviously you can, you know, just use the biggest one you have and you might have to do like a lesser quantity. So you basically just keep an eye on it. You don't want it to spill. Like I said, if you've got a bigger pot, then you should be okay, but still check on it, obviously. Um, so I don't know if you can see it very well, no you can kind of see it, it's starting to boil now so you can see it's kind of bubbling away. Um, so it's at this point you then add your lemon water and I can't get into it, In lemon juice even, not lemon water. <laughs> Okay, and just pour all that lemon into it and this is where the magic happens. It's so exciting. You literally see it start to coagulate and it just, you know, all starts to clump together. It's literally like magic. It's so nice to watch. <laughs> okay, that's a bit weird. Okay, and if you find that it's bubbling too much to the point where it's going to over, over spill, overflow, whatever, then just reduce the heat down a bit. But look, you can see it's starting to clump together. It literally is like magic. It's amazing. And that's the job of the lemon. It makes it clump together and start forming your tofu. How amazing is that? Um, so you know it's done when the, when the water runs clear. So you can see here it's clear, it's not milky that's when you know it's done and once it's here then you simply turn off the heat okay then you simply need to filter it out of the water into your cheesecloth so i've used this the small cheesecloth because obviously you you're not going to need you're not going to have as much product to work with um, so just transfer all that into there and if you wanted to kind of jazz it up a bit you can also, at this stage, add um, things like blended onions, scotch bonnet, green pepper, uh, not green peppers, I mean you could, but that wouldn't be so pretty. Uh, red peppers is what I wanted to say. That's how we did it when I made it in Nigeria with my auntie when she taught me. And that's it there. It looks so colorful and pretty. Okay, once you've done that, then just kind of drain out the excess water, just lift it out of the excess water. And now here's the thing, my auntie taught me that because you can basically filter out or drain out all the water by tying the cloth, the cheese cloth, and then putting heavy stuff on it. However, my auntie said that, we do, uh, that they don't do it like that anymore because it changes the texture and the taste. So instead, just tie the cheese cloth and then hang it up to drip dry for at least 20 minutes so that's how i do it and i love it so i do just squeeze like kind of twist the the cheesecloth to start you know getting as much of the excess water out as i can 
and you can see there there's that water again that I told you okay then I just simply tie the bag and as I'm tying I'm just trying to also kind of squeeze out a bit more excess water and then I tie it up and then I hang it here so I've moved to the conservatory now this recipe literally uses every corner of your kitchen as you can tell <laughs> okay just like it and you just allow that to to drip dry for at least 20 minutes I think I left mine for 40 minutes because I started doing something else but it's fine just at least 20 minutes it should be enough to kind of drain out the water okay so 40 minutes later I've come back to it and it's all done so I'm just gonna untie it and then come back to you in a sec because I had the camera in my hand okay so just get your chopping board and I'm just taking the tofu the wara out of the cheesecloth and I'm just going to proceed to chopping it and it looks like a head of cauliflower doesn't it? <laughs> it looks so funny okay so just get my container I've just washed that out from earlier and I'm just going to chop it all up now into my little dice diced pieces or whatever so I'm going to do some of them really small because I want to try making different like sauces with them and then the other half I will make into big chunks because I'm going to fry it. So yeah, there's loads of different ways you can do it. You can have it in like soups, uh, sauces, salads, things like that. So uh, a way that's really popular to have in Nigeria is frying it. So you'd obviously um, kind of marinate it, flavor it. So you can boil it with, you know, sp uh, onions and like spices and things like that and then fry it and it's so good. Um, a way that my grandma introduced me to is actually dipping it in uh, egg and then frying it and that way is so frigging tasty so um yeah if you want me to show you different ways that i use the tofu that i cook it then let me know and I'm, i'd be more than happy to do those videos um but i'll insert a little clip of how i did it when i did it on instagram and um, dipping it into the fried egg and obviously you'd season your egg um, so yeah, dip it into the egg and then fry it and it is so delicious and you get these beautiful golden fried egg tofu things. Oh my god, it's so nice. Oh, look at that. Literally so, so yummy. So, so nice. And if you want me to do any recipes for how I cook uh, my tofu, do let me know. Oh, so these are the little ones that I'm going to be using for soup, uh, I keep saying soup, sauces and stuff and it's so nice it's like the right firmness but not like rock solid but then it's not soft either because i don't like soft tofu and it just tastes so much nicer when you make it yourself as well seriously and the satisfaction is so good mm -hmm. okay and so that's a small one and these are the large ones that i'm going to be using for frying to make my egg fried tofu Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll catch you next week. Bye!